I'm at a, a very nice position, Doctor Who-wise, as we speak. Um, yesterday we were done and dusted on my scripts for the two-parter next year. I know what the title is of both. Um, I, um, we've signed off on the scripts. They may change after the read-through because what actors do influences them a tiny bit. But um, we're basically there. And I've, I've got to say, after having um, been filmed on draft 18 of Father's Day, uh, drafts four, five and four, respectively, of the two parts. I'm tremendously pleased with the production office. have actually had them for the last five weeks. And we basically just started looking at each other going, we're done, aren't we? Yep, we're done. I think um, there's a straight line between survival at the end of Old Doctor Who, um, which could just about be made in New Doctor Who, through the new adventures into New Doctor Who. I think that's the line of evolution. Russell was tremendously interested in the new adventures, wrote one, read all of them. Um, we all were. Moffat's got a short story. Uh, Rob Shearman is the only guy who wasn't writing for the new adventures who was on the first season. And even he was a, a big follower of them. Um, I think so many ideas from the new adventures found their way into the new series. Um, I think that's the evolutionary process at work. The 15 years did tremendous work on Doctor Who while it wasn't on television, work that really kept on going into the new se season. <laughs> okay, so I mean, you've had a big influence on the evolution of, of Who through its um, extended hiatus through the 90s. One of the biggest impacts on it uh, was the creation of pro possibly the best companion of all time, uh, Bernice Summerfield. Oh, you're just a man in love, aren't you? This I think <laughs> I like her. She's yeah. someone I'd like to go out, and, out drinking with. She's absolutely superb. Um, She's me in a frock, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you fancy it, I don't know. I mean, but, uh, well, that's a first. I've propositioned the interviewer within. <laughs> and it's on tape as well, so... <laughs> oh, dear God. <laughs> Hello, the future. <laughs> I was writing it for a long time before we had a Doctor cast. It was going to be Robbie Williams for a while, because the producer um, had met Robbie at a club and asked him, and he was up for it. And uh, <laughs> so for a week, I was writing the Robbie Williams Doctor, which was <laughs> I didn't I didn't really, really know where to start Is with that, that one. Is that serious or silly rumor? We can put on the internet later. No, that that's, that's serious. True. Yes. Wow. And last week, I got my one issue of an American comic book. I'm writing this six-issue miniseries for Marvel. Um, because Mark Miller, the comic writer, saw Father's Day, really liked it, emailed me saying, would you like to work for Marvel Comics? Another one of these wonderful emails out of the blue. <laughs> and um, I pitched them something, they really liked it. It's uh, Wisdom, which is uh, uh, one of Marvel's minor X-Men um, in British intelligence adventures against the unknown. Um, this first issue is about him taking on a bunch of fairies, which is kind of, in light of the Torchwood episode that went out the same damn week, <laughs> a huge coincidence. <laughs> And you brought back the Nymon. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Gary Russell came up to me in a, a convention hotel bar and said, we should bring back the Nymon. <laughs> because he'd been listening to Doctor Who monsters. He'd got just a bunch of Doctor Who audio uh, videos, and rather than watch them, had just been putting different monsters on and listening to them to decide which monsters he should use for Big Finish. And the Nymon have got great voices. And some of the more um, iconic monsters haven't got that good voices. I mean, you could base it, you couldn't really tell it was a Sontaran. You think it was somebody shouting. And uh, so, nylon, good voices. Good voices. And on the um, occasion of the recording, the actor actually went into a cupboard and shouted from inside it to provide <laughs> the nylon voice. All those of us who work on the show, we adore Terence. Um, he's the life and soul of Doctor Who. He's the old blues guys, you know. He's, he's the one, if you have a question about structure, he's the one who can answer it. Are you wanted, or was there editorial control? Oh, there's always, there's an editorial process. It's a team game. You know, you're not allowed to run off and do what you like. Um, you are to some degree, you know, you'll, you run off, you do what you like, you bring it back and then you know, you discuss it, you work with it. Um, all sorts of, we went all round the houses, because back in season one, nobody knew what, you know, what this was going to be like. Um, it was originally set in a pub, 
um, because I thought we were going to be kind of enclosed here. And um, that was the one thing we all did as new writers on televised Doctor Who. We all wrote it two men in a left. And Russell kept saying, no, make it bigger. We've got some budget. You know, don't, don't think of it as, you know, two sats. Mm -hmm. And we kept being told, bigger, 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 uh, smaller. OK, smaller. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my monsters were entirely computer generated, which is such a pity, because I always wanted to be, you know, photographed with my, you know, <laughs> with monster. <laughs> They'll bring up little action figures. Oh, I'd love that. I went to talk to a little um, school full of infants the other day. Um, no, no, as a Doctor Who writer. And um, they were... Um, uh, it, it, the teacher said to one little one, go on, show him your Reaper. And he put his hands up over his head and went, Rag! and chased the kids around the playground. <laughs> and he'd been doing that for weeks after Father's Day. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to come and see us. Thank and you. Thank you. Enjoy the Sea Devil episodes when you see them. <laughs> <laughs>